How's it going everyone? My name is Miguel Fuentes and today is Wednesday, uh, May the 11th and uh, <clears throat> and so today I'm, I'm going to be doing a video on, uh, we're going to be examining or um, how do you say, uh, we're going to be examining or explaining uh, Romans chapter 6 so before we get started let's go ahead and pray first amen heavenly father lord we just thank you lord for today we thank you lord for what you've done father in the name of jesus lord lord we thank you for today we thank you for the time that we spent together father God, we know for a fact that you are Lord of all, and that you are the King of above. That that you are the King of all. No, sorry, that you are King of Kings and Lord of Lord, Father and Lord. That you are holy and mighty, and and Lord, you are worthy of our praise, Father, for who you are. Father, Father, help us, Lord, to give us the fear of the Lord, and to seek you, and to and to worship you with with. Uh, with uh, you know, uh, and to love you with all our with all of our heart, mind, soul, and strength. We thank you. We praise you in Jesus' name. We pray. Amen and amen. So, <clears throat> in order for us to understand the Book of Romans or any of Paul's letters, that we must understand the Old Covenant. Now, Christians. And religious leaders in a in a, in a religious sect take Paul's writings out of context to fit their narrative, to fit their agenda. Because if you don't know about me, I'm not a part of the, you know, I'm not a Christian. I'm I'm a part of the kingdom of God. Who loves the Lord Jesus Christ with all my heart, with all my soul, and with all my strength. It's hard to hear to say that, but I'm speaking boldly by the power of the Holy Spirit. See, you gotta understand that I'm no longer religious. I'm no longer a part of the Christian system anymore. Or or matter of fact, I call it uh I call it the um uh what's it called? I'm I'm coming out of of uh, what is it? of Western Christianity. There you go. And I'm coming out of that system and into the kingdom of God. Because because it is God alone that we worship. Not our system, not our denominations, not our, uh, uh, our creed of whatever you know, and and you know, and Paul, God understand, uh, Romans is that Paul is writing for the, the Gentiles. It's, it's written for the for the for the Romans, the Christians and uh, the the kingdom man and kingdom woman in. Uh, Rome and so let's take a look at the scripture Romans chapter 6 if you got your Bibles with you go ahead and turn there Romans chapter 6 I hope you guys are having a bless bless evening amen <clears throat> and I'm reading out of the modern English version and it reads what shall we say then? Shall we continue in sin that grace may increase? God forbid. How shall we who die to sin live any longer in it? Do you not know that? Uh, do you know that we who were baptized into, Christ, uh, into Jesus Christ were baptized into his death? Therefore, 
were therefore were buried with him by baptism into death, that just as Christ was risen up from the dead by the glory of the Father, even so we also shall walk in the newness of life. For we, for if sorry, uh, for if we have been uh, united with with him in the likeness of his death. So shall we also be united with him in the likeness of his resurrection. Knowing this, that our old man has been crucified with him, so that the body of sin may be destroyed, and we shall no longer be slaves to sin. For the one who has died is free from sin. Now if we now if we die with Christ we believe that we shall also live with him knowing that Christ being raised uh raised from the dead will never die again death has no further dominion over him for the death he died he died to sin once for all but the life he lives he lives to God Likewise, you also consider yourselves to be dead to sin, be but alive to God through Jesus Christ our Lord. Therefore, do not let sin reign in your moral bodies that you shall obey it, it in its lusts. Do not yield your members to sin as instruments of unrighteousness. But yield yourselves to God as those who are alive from the dead and your bodies to God as instruments of righteousness. For, for sin shall not have dominion over you for you are not under the law but under grace. But when shall we sin because we are not under the law but under grace? God forbid. Do not know that to whom you yield yourselves as slaves to obey, you are slaves of the one who who you obey, whether of sin leading to death or of obedience leading to righteousness. Mm. But thanks be to God for your sorry for you were slaves of sin, but you have obeyed from the heart the form of teaching to whom you were entrusted. And having been freed from sin, you became the, the, the slave of righteousness. I speak in human terms because of the weakness of your flesh. For just as you have yielded your members as slaves to impurity and in Iniquity leading to more iniquity, even so now heal your members as slaves to righteousness unto holiness. For when you were the slave of sin, you were free from righteousness. Which fruit did you have then from the things of which you are now ashamed? The result of those things is death. But now, having been freed from sin and having become slaves of God, you have fruit unto holiness, to the, to the end is eternal life. For the wages of sin is death, but the gift of God is eternal life through Jesus Christ our Lord. And that's the end of chapter 6. Now, <coughs> let's break it down. Let's go ahead and break it down, because... Christianity is not going to teach you all this. No. Christianity will teach us how to obey our oppressors. Christianity is there to keep the minorities under check. For me, personally, I believe that 
the 501c3 churches, they are not teaching biblical truth. They're just there to get statuses, and if they say the wrong thing, the government will come and take away their statuses. And they want to keep their statuses, and sorry, in order for, for them to keep their uh, statuses in the 501c3 churches, they got to compromise the word of God. For that being said, I'm not a part of any 501c3. Matter of fact, in this ministry, we're going to preach 100% truth, like it or not. And I'm going to speak boldly to you guys, either in YouTube, Instagram, or whatever. And in, in the whole entire world, we'll see. Because, because the Spirit of God is in me to teach you guys the truth. Because that's my assignment to you guys. Is that if you're going to be used by God in the kingdom of God. You got to be willing and you got to be submissive unto the Lord. What you're going to say. And be guided by the Holy Spirit what you say. And many Christians right now. Take a lot of scriptures in, uh, out of context. Not only is hurting me to search out the truth, but but they're hurting others who are seeking the truth. Now they're just now that they, they they have itching ears to please their flesh. Now they have itching ears to please. Their their pride, their 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 ego, getting feel good messages. This ministry is not about that, folks. It's about glorifying the Lord Jesus Christ in our life. Because I believe that the that the kingdom of God that Christ preach is a lifestyle and not a religious saying. It is a lifestyle. So, first point I want to make is that we are dead in our sin unless, sorry, we are dead in our sin unless we are born again. If we're going to be born again, we got to repent and believe the gospel. Amen. Paul made it clear that we do not continue in our sin if we are living in the kingdom of God. We walk in the newness of life, not death. In many churches, uh, <clears throat> well, many so called Christians continue in their sin. But I know what the Bible says I can't judge a man by its, by its cover. You know, I gotta, I gotta. Oops. Oh, give it one second. Alright. And so, as, as the Bible says, as scripture says, I gotta pluck out my own eye before before I tell you guys. Matter of fact, I've been there. I can I continued in my sin. After after I received Christ, I thought I was okay. But when I dive in into Scripture on my own, I've been tell you know I've been told a lie. You know you know this this saying. You know, we're sinners under under God's grace. But yeah, that's contradictory of what Paul says. That if we are, but if we are uh, dead in our sin, or or whether, um, <clears throat> we know for a fact that the old man has been crucified with 
with with Christ, and that we are being free from sin, not continued in sin. Which reminds me of First John chapter five, that those who continue on sinning is not of His. That's you know that's the truth. And through baptism we were we are buried with Christ unto death. You know, we, we got to crucify our flesh. That's why fasting and prayer is important. If you're going to be a a uh, anointed man or woman of God, you gotta be fat, fasting and prayer. Again, kingdom the, the kingdom lifestyle is way different than than, than Western Christianity. I tell you, and, now, and and the second point I want to make is that we are crucified with Christ. Once we die in Christ, death has no dominion over us. But at the same time, we're all human beings. We all going to die one day. You know, I've been living with type one diabetes for I don't know about me just eight years. And those eight years, it's been a struggle. There wasn't any early signs of of uh, of any diabetes complications, but I praise God for for that. But that's not an excuse to understand that everybody would die. You know. We we only live on average sixty five to eighty five years old. Some some humans will live longer, maybe up to one hundred and five years. And we see the uh, in Genesis we see people who live hundreds of hundred years until you know after after. Uh, Joseph's death, which he died, uh, I think he died in um, 110 years old, or something like that. But yeah, but if we are in Christ, we live in freedom from sin. Meaning sin has no dominion over us because we overcome it. We, we, we crucify our flesh in order for us to live in to live in Christ. Third point I want to make is that don't let sin reign in your in our moral bodies. See, we shall we should use our bodies for righteousness. We we if if we die in our flesh by fasting and prayer, sin has not so sorry, uh sin shall not have dominion over you because you overcame and that you weaken the flesh so that the spirit man or the Holy Spirit will uh will 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 give you the hunger for more of righteousness through Christ. Now we are not under the law. If we do it religiously in the flesh. See, God gave us grace to walk in the Spirit, which fulfills the law of God. Paul's not saying get rid of the Old Testament stuff, no. Nor shall we, um, nor shall we practice any Old Testament stuff unless you know you know unless if it's you know the Sabbath or whatever and I'm not a seven seventh day Adventist okay and I'm not a seven-day Adventist that we should keep the Sabbath. It's a choice. 
If, if I want to love the Lord with all my heart, with all my soul, and with all my strength, I'm willing to obey. If, if God says keep the Sabbath, keep the Sabbath. If God says, you know, observe my feasts, I will, you know, I will observe his feasts. No, no, I'm not. I'm not forcing anybody to believe this. You know, do your own research, do your own Bible study, and listen to the Lord. See what He says. But I'm willing to walk in the Spirit of God so that I can fulfill the laws of God, so that so that I can fulfill His word. When I'm being a doer of the word. And not hearers only. Lastly. I want to make this clear. Before I close this. The gift of God. Is eternal life. The gift of God is eternal life. Sin is always. Sin always brings death. But we live in Christ. So that you know. We have life in him. Holiness is key to know your identity in Christ. See, holiness is not about don't watch TV, don't do this, don't do that, don't do this, but do this and do that. No. Holiness is, is what God wants us to do in the first place. Even through the Israelites, God gave them the law. And when, and when people rebelled, of the first generation rebelled against God, rebelled against Moses and Aaron, and and you know we 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 were, we're going through the book of Numbers. They rebel, they rebel, and they rebel. They don't want to do the will of God. They just want to do uh, their their own way. Because of that, because of their of their complaining and murmuring they did not enter the kingdom sorry they did not enter the promised land but when when Moses wrote the book of Deuteronomy not only Joshua was the uh, was a uh, successor to Moses to be the next leader of Israel they reviewed the law of God to the next generation so that they can keep the law in their, you know, in, in, you know, in, in, uh, in the promised land. <clears throat> and shortly after, they don't want to keep God's law. And it, it proven in, in the book of Jubilees chapter 1. They will go astray. They will not listen to the laws of God. And they will be exiled into the Gentile countries or regions or whatnot. Sure enough, came to pass, they rebelled against the Lord so much. I think the northern kingdom went to Assyria and the southern kingdom went to the Babylonians and you know the whole the whole shebang. So holiness is key to know your identity in Christ. So if you're going to be used by the Lord, if you're going to be uh, used by God, keep his word. That's all he's asking. Just keep his word. And um, yeah. As I close, Paul's writing is a very valuable uh, writing. You know, the, Paul's writing is very, very valuable. If you understand and apply in your life. Sin is death. Through Christ we are set free from sin. Having dominion. Uh, set free from sin. Having dominion over us. Through Christ. Chains. Chains. Has been broken. So I hope you guys enjoy. This little. Uh. Bible study. I hope that you guys enjoyed this. I may do another one, maybe uh, in a different book, maybe the Psalms or Proverbs or whatnot. Whatever the Lord leads. 
And uh, I hope you guys are having a great week so far. And uh, yeah, may God bless you. May God keep you. I'll see you guys again next time. Bye.